Sorry. Okay. Being oh. being uh, after six, I'm going to call the meeting to order. And uh, will you lead us with a pledge? Thank you. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Shall we bow forward in prayer? Father, we thank you for this, this grand day. We thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed on all of us. We thank you for a new day, a new opportunity to love and to bask in your wisdom and knowledge. Father, we ask you for insight. We ask you for purpose. We ask you for guidance that you will lead us in the way that will best fit this community. And we thank you for speaking to our hearts and to the community's heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, um, so roll call. Mr. Thomas? Present. Mayor Breeden? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. Ms. Stevens? Here. Four ayes, one absent. We do have a quorum. Okay, on the approval of the agenda, we're going to make some changes on the agenda. And, sir, would you address those? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we'd like to add a closed session item for the end of the meeting. Uh, as you recall, to add an item to the agenda under the Brown Act, we must satisfy two requirements. One is that we just learned of it after the uh, agenda was posted, and the second item being that it can't wait until the next uh, meeting. In this case, we are adding a discussion regarding pending litigation. Uh, this is a uh, lawsuit that we just became aware of today, and it is uh, under the caption, Michael Neal versus uh, City Council of the City of Ridgecrest, and there is an ex party hearing tomorrow morning. So uh, for that reason, we did not learn of it until after the agenda was posted, and it cannot wait until the next meeting because there's a hearing tomorrow morning. So we ask that this be added as a closed session item and that uh, the agenda be uh, approved by council with that addition. Okay, and we are also pulling item number seven which is part of the um, uh, proposed action to approve formation of a landscape and lighting district number 7188. We're going to pull that item. They are not ready, and um, so that item will be. So if we will approve the agenda with the addition and the uh, subtraction. So move. Uh, may I comment? Pardon me? May I comment? Uh, it is not it, at public comment time. Can we get you? Is when we get to public comment time? This isn't. This is on the agenda change, sir. It's at your discretion, but uh, I have it, no it, problem it, with it. that. All right. I, my only comment is the description is not sufficient enough. It's a public document. It should identify what the hearing is about. Thank you. The, the member of the community is, uh, is correct that the public, it is a public document, and that is the requirement that the public document be made available by the city clerk at the city clerk's office. But as far as uh, the description for agenda purposes for pending litigation, we need only give the name of the case. Uh, sir, if you'll check this, the case law on it, you will find that it has to be sufficient enough that. A citizen has the opportunity to understand if they want to investigate further. Your your comments did not qualify for that measure, and they need to be further qualified in order to be in compliance with the Brown Act. Well, as I said, the, all that is required is that the document be made available and that the case, the case name be provided. However, we will voluntarily say that uh, this appear if I'm uh, characterizing it properly it appears to be a uh, request for a temporary uh, injunction um, uh, an injunction from the court to stop some action by the city and that's not quite clear to me but it is seeking a um, 
an injunction, injunctive relief from the court on an emergency basis. Okay, thank you. All right, now um, then if we could, uh, we have a motion and a second, don't we? We need a second. Is there a second to the motion to change the amend the agenda? Please vote. Can I say this? I want to speak mine. If I want to say it, because obviously I have problems with one, two, or three. So I'm going to say, can I do it here and say it? Certainly you can. Okay. I'm saying yes. Approve the agenda. Obviously I'm not. Okay. Thank you. We have four eyes motion carries. Okay. The next item is um, public comment. Persons wishing to to address the council on items that are within the council's jurisdiction and do not already appear on the agenda may do so at this time. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the city council may not take action on an item that does not appear on the agenda. Speakers are limited to five minutes. <coughs> <clears throat> the public comment section of the agenda is limited to total one hour. Each speaker is asked, <coughs> is asked to provide his or her name. Sir? Evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members. It appears that we now have a problem in this city of, of operating under a republic form of government. We have a shadow government, apparent, in, in my opinion, that uh, puts things on, gets things moving before they actually ask the people. First started off with the casino. They had the agreement written and all the stuff done before they ever asked the people who even wanted it to have pro proper input. And they're going to claim there was an attorney-client privilege. Well, writing a document like that, there is no attorney-client privilege except in a very narrow fashion in that if they want to have um, a legal opinion if it doesn't affect something, but since it's public, that legal opinion should be given to all the people and it should be answered in public, not behind closed doors in a closed session. In my opinion, that was a violation of the Brown Act. Now we have the idea of creating a Parks and Recreation dis District that was never brought to the public's attention. It was just decided and we're moving forward with it before we ever bothered to ask the public. We had a uh, quality of life meeting the other day that had posters up that was put forth in my opinion to allow public input on what was what whether or not we were going to have the assessment district uh, the paper reported it as having a uh, the approval of the people as to what we're going to do with parks and recreation and whether we wanted an assessment district there was nothing there uh, when you look at the the vote board that they put up the majority of those votes and positive came from supporters and a great number of from from uh, city people we need to get back to believing in the people where we can actually have a discussion before the decision is made we were I looked at the plans and 90 percent of it maybe 95 percent of it went to baseball parks which may represent the use of 10 percent of the city I think we need to talk about this it needs to be public. We need to have it public. You're our representatives. We need to have that input. The assessment district needs to come and be talked about what what's it's going to gene exactly what it's going to be spent for. The people need and deserve to be informed. The last one I have here is at the last meeting, the council chose to send. Mr. Strand to Washington, D.C. A part of the discussion, and in my opinion, they agreed that they were going to discuss what they wanted him to do and give, it, give him guidance before he left for that particular mission. My understanding is he went today. Well, what happened to that promise to the people that we're going to actually have this agenda? From the way I read it, the tribe and maybe even the federal government, is not complying with the agreement. If that's true, then we need to hold them accountable to that agreement. We can't turn around and say, well, we're going to send someone that uh, 
is going to go talk about this, but we have no idea what he's going to do, what he's going to support, or what he's going to request. I'm very disappointed in that. We, we came to another step. I went to back read the, the minutes from the last meeting, and somehow we decided we're not going to take meetings on minutes anymore, or minutes on the meetings anymore. There's no, there's no minutes, there's no information there regarding uh, council comments, there's no information there regarding public comments. Uh, they're meeting minutes. And when it puts on it is the vote. I think we need to go back to what this city's done traditionally for a number of years. I can't understand why we don't want to operate in a republic form of government and allow the citizens to be part of their government. I see it as the council sitting up there saying, we really don't want to hear from you. We're just going to go do it all behind closed doors. And if you like it, oh well. If you don't like it, oh well. We come here because we want to be part of our community. To deny us that opportunity is not a republic form of government. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, I am Linda Fuller. I reside at 1217 North Las Postas Court here in Red Crest. I am a commissioner for the Department of Aging, and therefore I'm speaking on behalf and advocating. I am entitled to advocate for seniors and anyone that is disabled over the age of 18. I would, number one, like to also talk about the casino because I'm also running for a position in Sacramento with the legislature to, um, again, advocate for seniors. I would like to discuss the casino, but as I can tell from my previous speaker, I'm a day late and a dollar short. I recently had to take a training class, a very lengthy, time-consuming ethic training class to apply for my position in Sacramento for the senior legislature. Uh, when it comes to the casino, I have a real major question. Why did the gentleman from the city of Ridgecrest go to Washington? What was his purpose for going to Washington? If it were ethically legal, was it morally right? If it was morally right, was it ethically legal? Second question in regards to the senior center. I am very, very adamant on what I say to you, and I am representing at least a minimum of 50 people that go to the senior center every day. Every day that place is open. These people depend on this building. Some of us, that is our only human contact. It's the only hot meal we have in that day. Again, I'm asking you to look at your integrity, look at your morals, look at your ethics. When was the Kern McGee building that we're standing in right now built? When was the senior center built? When was the last money you put any kind of reputable money into the senior center? I have been a resident of this community since 1959, and I am 73 years old. I've raised my children, I have grandchildren, I have great-grandchildren. I am ever, ever so humble and grateful for the parks and everything that you do for the children in this community. I, for one, am very familiar with what we didn't have in the 70s and the 80s, and, and I commend you for that. But don't forget, someday you're going to be old, and you're not going to have any place to go if you don't take care of it. You didn't take care of Penny Pool, and now look what you got. The parking lot at the Senior Center is absolutely atrocious. You have built yourself a lawsuit. You really need to think about what you're doing here, guys. You, I just read in the paper about a slip and slide. This is not my first time on the slip and slide. This is a daycare. You're looking for a lawsuit. Really think about it. You have an attorney. You better be talking to him about what you're doing. Um, 
I know with the Senior Center, I used to work at the Senior Center, and then I volunteered at the Senior Center. I know personally I have the documents in files in my home. This is the fourth time the Senior Center has been told they are going to get an upgrade. There is a grant, and I hope I live long enough to see it happen, because I haven't seen it happen in 20 years at least. Um, I looked on today's website. They said there is a pool. Yeah, we know it's closed. They say there's horseshoes. There's all kinds of physical activities at the senior center. I have yet to see a horseshoe pit. I know what a horseshoe pit is. Did it many times as a child. The grounds isn't even fit for it. You can't walk across the, gr the grounds and not get wet because the water is improperly being used. And back to the slip and slide, we're in a drought. Do we really want to use that money for a slip and slide? And again, put ourselves in that kind of a position. Um, I read in the daily uh, the news review, there was $1.9 million in upgrades that we have in grants. Now they want to take the brand new ivory tower Taj Mahal that looks much better than the senior center and upgrade it and put new floors and put new carpets. I know a lot of senior homes that don't look this good, guys. So you need to think what you're doing, okay? You want to redo the windows? Do you want to redo the parking lot? Go take a look at the senior center. So take a look at some of your streets. There's nothing wrong with where you work. You have a really nice place to work in. We should be so lucky to live like this. Um, I, I really want to thank you guys. I, I come in here and I moan and I groan and I gripe. And, and, um, but I'm going to come back next week and I want to answer to my questions. I want to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, what are your plans for the Senior Center. Mr. Strand and Mr. Patton came to the Senior Center a few Mondays ago. They didn't talk about the Senior Center, talked about the play parks, bathrooms, sports. I'm too old to play ball. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Do we want to have more, uh, or Bart, Lauren? taking his card over right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because we do have money that we have allotted, and it is in engineering for the parking lot, and as well as the HUD monies are still being going taken for improvements. So, I wanted to answer, but I know we cannot answer items that are not on the agenda fully, and I don't want to just give her lip service. I'd rather give her facts. Like I said, Lauren's giving her card, card right now, so they can continue with that. She'll have facts tomorrow. Thank you. It's not that we don't want to answer you. We want to answer you fully. Okay, sir. Good evening, Mr. Wallace, Mrs. Stevens. The latest casino debate on March 21 wound down with a fearsome triad of the vastly beneficial casino project attacking council members and all citizens of Ridgecrest who oppose their money-grabbing efforts. The sad spectacle of three non-citizens of Ridgecrest standing up here to demean us, deride us, call us liars, and declare council members' studied statements to be garbage was disgusting to the uttermost. If it had not been so enraging to listen to these attacks allowed by our mayor, I would have found it hard to quit laughing. So let's review some of these. The tribe's attorney is resorting to accusing everyone here who wants a NEPA review of the project instead of that joke of a TIR, TEIR to be nothing but obfuse decators. That means misleading types who just get pleasure out of causing pain and disruption. Well, remember lawyer class 101, Stan. Tell a lie long enough, people may start to believe you. Then we have the very well-fed George Golson trying to shoot down any and all objections raised that night. Here they are. 
We don't have a weed farm in Death Valley. It's in Death Valley Junction, all of 10 miles outside of Death Valley. To people who say tribes get around Nipah reviews all the time, I know better than you. Just don't ask how. It's laughable that an anti-casino person, you know, someone who would consider the best interest of the citizen, is on the tribal city committee. And we do not agree to amending the MSA. We want an intergovernmental agreement, even though we have no government in this valley and it'd be improper. Last and least, in the way of truth, Nigel White. This person starts out with the usual deceiver's tactic of trying to sound consoling, saying how well this is all going to work out. This casino will be the best thing to ever happen to Ridgecrest. Of course, all detractors are either liars, completely ignorant, and by the way, didn't you know that crime goes down around casinos? Please just trust me, said the spider to the fly. Now here's where the true colors of the beast come out. Even though it was so painful to do, this person proceeds to launch venom toward our council members. Somehow, with all-knowing qualities, he knows how much Mrs. Stevens talks to others on the phone, and this means that she talks to Stand Up for California all the time. Not only that, but she has an agenda, and it isn't in the best interest of the tribe or himself. He said that specifically, by the way. God forbid. She shouldn't go to D.C. to represent the people who voted her into office. She wouldn't promote the casino. Now suddenly, the tribe members who never lived here, and this person who likely doesn't even live in California, deserve representation by our council members. How is that supposed to work? Somebody please tell me. Last and least, he was allowed to declare the thoughts and statements of two of your fellow council members to be garbage twice. I guess you can see I'm not real happy about this, can't you? All I have left to say about this is we can see clearly now who and what we are dealing with here. What is saddest to the extreme is that such a person is allowed, without reprimand, to make such statements here. Any respectful chairperson would not have allowed that to pass. Shame on you, Mayor Breeden, for that. Shame on others on the council who have supported this project. We have not been rightly represented. Thank you, sir. Who's next, please? Dave Matthews, my uh, address is still on file with the city clerk, I hope, uh, since I haven't moved. Um, the last time I was at the podium was two meetings ago, and I uh, talked about not having sufficient information to contact waste management, and also about not getting response to get my tr trash can replaced. Well, I guess there was people out there listening, and I thank them, as one of them was the city clerk, because the next day the uh, local phone number got put up in the, on a web page that I had complained about, and things got rearranged. However, there's still a problem with that, and that phone number that is given still goes to the 800 number down in Lancaster. So. My point is that I'd like to see a local contact here. And two people showed up at my door the next morning uh, offering to, or looking for my old trash can so they could replace it. So <laughs> the first one won, of course. But the other was willing to act in behalf, on behalf of waste management as a local contact. Now, I'm not sure whether he's worked that out with them or not. But my point is this. You call down there on these robo desks, as I call them, and maybe you get 
somebody who's familiar with the situation, and maybe you're not. And it takes a while for them to go through all the process and finally get back up here. I don't think that's customer service. A lot of people do that. It's not just waste management. But that, to me, is not customer service. If you want to provide your customer with service, you get them a phone number. They can contact you uh, directly. Okay. Um, with regard to the web page, I'm not sure who is actually in charge of maintaining that, but it certainly needs some work. Uh, I haven't looked recently within the last couple of weeks, but a couple of weeks ago I looked for the email addresses in the police department, and lo and behold, Ron Shan was still chief of police, and uh, Captain was not get up as a chief of police. And I found some other items here and there that are way out of date. Now, I know a lot of people uh, maybe are, are busy with other things, but there should be somebody, even if it's even if it's temporary contractor or some kind, that needs to update that website. <coughs> After all, that, I mean, Facebook and, and this, all these other things, they may get you instant recognition, but if somebody's really interested in Ridgecrest, they're going to go to a website. And if they get misinformation there, they're going to start wondering, well, what about that city? Do I want to go there? Do I want to open a business there? Do I want to visit there? You know, it's, it's, it's our... Uh, main advertisement as far as I'm concerned. So take heed and uh, get somebody on that. Uh, I missed the Parks and Rec meeting the other day because my reminders somehow got canceled. But uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Porter what he was saying. I think we need to take a harder look at this, this Parks District. And I know a little bit about the horseshoe pits at the senior center. They used to be there, but people quit. I, I don't know whether they got too old or quit quit using them, or maybe Skip Gorman wasn't throwing out any more horseshoes. I don't know. Uh, they covered them up and made a garden out of them, I think, is what the last thing I, I remember. And I know for a fact that some of the equipment in that senior center was provided by private citizens. I know who they were, and I know what they provided. So that senior center, like she says, you know, we all get old eventually. I can attest to that. <laughs> can, I, hey. can I come in? Sir, go ahead. Dave, this is a quick follow-up. Uh, no, um, good comments. Uh, I, I noticed the, there's several things we're going to try to upgrade and and have some improvements on. I I went to the uh, the video archive file the, the other night trying to find three specific clips, and I after about an hour and a half I gave up because every time I'd get there you you try to move the thing and it jumps uh, 20 minutes back and you try to get the exact numbers 20 minutes forward yeah it, it's it's literally I gave up after two hours the system we have for the video archive is shockingly antiquated and I've had multiple complaints from constituents we are so far behind the curve on that it's it's crazy uh, we're going to work on that. I'm going to get with, with Jed. We're going to fix it, okay? We're going to get modernized like what other counties have around the state. They, many of them are doing Facebook Live, all sorts of things, instant program, instant like that, that work perfect. We're going to get that fixed. Lori Acton, I, somebody, I had three people write on something about, uh, Lori Acton is still listed as the vice mayor on the website. Clear as a bell. Uh, so in answer to your question, these things, Whoever has cognizance over that, we need to fix it. So I, I agree with you on both counts. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, next uh, please. Marilyn Neal. And uh, my husband... Uh,
stated and expressed my ire of our last meeting uh, probably as well or better than I could have. The, uh, the shame that has been put upon this community is despicable. The, the division that has been caused in this community over this casino issue is despicable. Never in my almost 40 years of living here have I ever seen anything that has so ripped apart the fabric of the character of this community. I began writing a letter this week and didn't, didn't complete it, decided against it, but I was talking about just the incredible character that I've seen of the people here in Ridgecrest over the years. We have phenomenal uh, academics and scholars and scientists and inventors and everybody else who, that these are people who have sacrificed so much in their lives to live in a community out in the middle of nowhere without all the thrills and chills because they care about our nation, because they care about their own families. But I'd like for you to consider, after what my husband has already shared with you, I'd like to consider, you to consider these two little paragraphs that I have here. Dealing with an Indian tribe is dealing with a sovereign nation. The same as dealing with Canada, Mexico, France, Egypt, Japan, or any other country in the world. You are subject to their laws and their courts and not the laws and courts of the United States, nor the state where the tribe is located. U.S. and state civil laws do not apply to sovereign tribes. They are immune from lawsuits. I'll also share this paragraph with you. The fact remains that, and this is after a whole document that I'll share with you what it is in just a moment. The fact remains that like Hollywood's insulting, fictionalized Comancheros, modern day non-Indians offering financing, slot machine deals, management consulting, and other services are fundamentally not unlike those heinous exploiters of the past, reaping a 400% profit that would be criminal usury in many states, but is routine at Indian casinos, is simply the modern day equivalent of trading beads and trinkets for Manhattan Island. This, these two paragraphs are from a document $24 worth of beads and trinkets. Would you like to, if you're a gaming person, would you like to gamble on who you think the author of this was? It happens to be Mr. Nigel White, along with Gary Green. I'd like for you to all consider your vote last week. I would encourage you to read the rest of Mr. White's manipulative tactics to not only scam this community, but to disgrace and rip off the Timbasha Shoshone. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, seeing none. I'm sorry. David Liviano. Greetings, Madam Mayor, uh, fellow board members. On a lighter note, um, I'm the music teacher, uh, new Ridgecrest resident, and I'm pleased to bring to your attention as a part of the community service that I'd like to provide in music education. This Saturday morning, I will conduct a workshop, a three-hour workshop. It's a college-level course for music teachers and music students interested in developing a musical competent ear. 
and it's going to be held between 9 and 12 noon this Saturday, April 7th, at St. Anne's Church, courtesy of uh, Fran Rogers and Deb Veidt, who have invited me and helped me develop this project. So I would encourage anyone that's interested and wants to learn more and help themselves or their students develop a, a competent musical ear to attend this course. Uh, I will provide the music materials and the cost is minimal, only $30 just to cover for the materials. Normally this course uh, that is taught at high level university colleges goes over $1,500 and all that. So I'd like to just leave, uh, <coughs> if I may, a brochure that perhaps could be posted, a flyer with Miss Charlotte. And the other thing, uh, for the end of the year, uh, the charter school, under the leadership of Dr. Martinez and uh, Mrs. Ho, we will hold <coughs> the end of the year concert with the young students there on Friday, April 27 at 2 p.m on the school premises. So I would like to invite everybody. We have a surprise song for the community. I wrote the lyrics and the words to the school's alma mater song called Soar Eagle Soar. And we will also be celebrating in this song as a surprise. Well, now not anymore. <laughs> the founder of the school, uh, famous uh, NASA engineer, Mrs. Elsa Hennings. Thank you very much for the support. I'm very inspired to be in this wonderful community with all its ups and downs and I hope that my contribution as a music educator and teacher will lighten up and bring a little more joy to the community of Rich Chris, the families and the children. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to begin with council announcements. Um, Eddie, you want to go? I have not, Madam Mayor. Lindsay? Wallace? I have a question uh, from Council. There was an, a question that was raised whether, uh, not, not this Council, but our Council, a uh, question was raised whether the uh, asking people not to clap was uh, a violation of their rights or not, and I asked you because, quite frankly, I thought you were all trying to tell us something when you did that, and it was very difficult, and maybe it's just because I'm old, but it was hard to tell whether there was six people clamping or 160, and I guess I could probably tell there was a difference there. And so that's why I asked you to raise your hand so we could see the depth of support or lack thereof for what people said. So I asked our council to respond to that was I wrong in doing that? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I do have some thoughts about that. I, I don't think you were wrong at all. Um, the, uh, someone wrote a, an email to you saying that uh, uh, their rights were violated. Um, look, the, I heard it exactly the way you just said it, which is it was a request. Uh, there was no prohibition, no one was... Uh, I, did, I did ask them to raise their hand and not clap. Correct, correct. So you asked, so, you yeah. asked. Uh, it was not a prohibition. Um, there was no rule made that no one shall clap. Um, and I thought it was a great idea because it was, like you say, it allowed the people on the dais to actually gauge the numbers. Um, Ms. Stevens and I were laughing that there's no applause meter, so there's no way to uh, uh, to gauge that just from sound. Um, but uh, uh, like we're saying, there's nothing wrong with asking it. Uh, uh, <coughs> you know, there's a the, the problem with clapping is that uh, it's allowed, but uh, um, I would say that the danger is if it's a very boisterous meeting then clapping can, can uh, devolve into hooping and hollering, and then the next thing you know, it's a disruption of the meeting. So, but certainly, there, you, you made no rule against clapping. You simply asked politely, and uh, I thought it was a great I idea. I just want to make sure I didn't violate anybody's rights because I wanted to see what you had to say. I wanted to hear the depth. Yeah, and in my, in my view, you could ask as you could continue to ask. There's no harm in asking. Okay, thank you. 
All right. I think that yeah. needs to be addressed from the other side. Address it, please. Well, it's more than clapping. It can be booing, it can be yawing, and, and the fact of the danger actually doesn't even come in or even discussed in the case law. When you ask someone to do something by the council, that in itself has a chilling effect. It puts people in a position of not wanting to speak or not wanting to stand up and say their mind. The whole purpose of these meetings are for us to tell you, our representatives, what we want. If you want, and, and I'll, if, if you says, I'd like to see a show of hands as long with, with anything else you do, that's fine. I don't have a problem with you asking for that. That's perfectly legitimate. But asking them not to boo, asking, I mean, I don't believe in booing because I think it's rude. But sometimes it may be necessary. And when it comes to disruption, the case law is said very clearly. It can be up to three or four minutes, maybe five minutes. It's all part of freedom of speech. And that's one thing. If we want to keep our liberty and freedom and we want to keep our nation, we have to support that above all else. Because without it, we have nothing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, the next item is uh, the consent calendar. Uh, proposed action and in... in uh, I'm going to read it so I get it right. Are you going to announce the water meeting? Pardon me? The water I was going to bring that when the item came up on the agenda. I don't, it's not on it. Yeah, it is. Direction to... Um, okay. I'm sorry, because I have it all here ready to talk about. All right, then I will say that. There is going to be uh, on the 5th at 5 o'clock here... A, a meeting of the GSA uh, at 5 o'clock. We're asking uh, two hours of public comment, asking the PAC to address um, the public after that, the, the uh, policy action, it, it, policy advisory committee, and their report and discussion thereof of the uh, report that you're going to, that you have seen, it's on the agenda. I have sent it all to council too, and it is a workshop. And then there will be 30 minutes after that for the TAC to respond, and then there will be comments uh, from the board. It is an item that is going to discuss the charging of um, the fees of water usage for those who use greater than two acre feet. A year, those who use less than two acre feet a year, and that's about most of the people in the valley, um, the private well owners, that uh, there is a, a charge of right now, the proposed is $50 an acre foot. And there is a discussion of the charges, and I'd like to share with you that. I'm sorry, I had it set up for the item on the agenda. Um, there was charges, and, and to try to determine how much it was, the Water District chose not to chart, make any charges of anything that they've done uh, to date. And, and uh, the Kern County did the same thing. The City of Ridgecrest, because their... their um, authority is different than just water on the GSA is planning and wastewater charges were accepted to oh I'm sorry here it is okay the charges are going to be two hundred and ten thousand dollars two hundred ten thousand four hundred and sixty five dollars and ninety three cents that will be reimbursed to the city of Ridgecrest for their expenditures so far and and um, the the staff came back with that recommendation approved by all. So we will hear what you have to say. Please be there. It's a time to say what you want to say so those people on the GSA can hear what you think and see if you have better ideas, other opportunities. And, um, and it, it will be two hours of public comment. We're listening at lift, leaving it at, 
at three minutes each at the end of those two hours if there is more comment made and you've sp already spoken and and you haven't taken the place of someone else who wishes to speak will continue to keep that up for two hours at the end of that then I say the 30 minutes for the pack and the tack so I invite you all to come I could have sworn there was direction on here anyhow okay that was it my apologies thanks Lindsay for letting me know okay that's the end of, of council announcements and we will go to the consent calendar all items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine by city staff and we approved in one motion if no member of the council or the public wishes to comment or ask the questions if comment or discussion is just is <coughs> It's desired by anyone that item. <coughs> Eddie, can you finish reading that? <coughs> that item will be removed. That item will be, remo be removed from the consent calendar and be considered separately with public comments before action is taken. Do any member <coughs> of the council? wish to have an item pull and I will I will read them item number four number one proposal action to approve draft uh, minutes of the city of Ridgecrest City Council successor redevelopment agency financial authority housing authority regular meeting dated March the 21st 2018 number two announcing proclamation prepared for the month of April and scheduled dates for scheduled dates of presentation number three receive and file the Ridgecrest uh, area convention and visitors bureau annual financial report number four proposed action to approve and recommendations from the planning commission to city council to approve the resolution for a summary vacation of public access rights to the old college height boulevard spur and authorize the mayor <coughs> excuse me to execute this resolution and for the city clerk to record do anyone in council wish desire to pull any of the consent items. Does anyone from the public? Number four. No, number four. And one. Motion to approve items two and three. Second. <laughs> Please vote. I'm voting yes. Four yeses, one absent, and motion carries. Okay. And who pulled number one, Mr. Porter? If you please kind enough to address it. Ronald Porter, I uh, ask that the city council not approve the minutes because they're not truly minutes. They're nothing more than a restatement of the agenda with a vote on it. Minutes are supposed to identify to someone that reads them what occurred at the meeting and these don't do it historically we've always done it and I think we need to do it again and, uh, and show why we have it because they're not minutes if you just want to put a vote list out then that's it but that's all this is I have no idea what the city council's comments are um, this basically leads me back to what I was talking about earlier a shadow government they don't want the people to be able to look see what the council said so they can hold them accountable they don't want to see what the citizens said I'm sorry it has to be a full open proceeding and I don't think this addresses that need and one of the council members today talked about having to try and get through the video trying to find a question um, it's much easier to read it and see if there's something else you want to review what comments were made by the council members or a public person we just need to go back to using it so that at least it's have a fairly representative guidance on what occurred at the meeting thank you can I ask one thing? Have we have we had a change in process, and if so, why? I'd like to ask too. Rick, could you address that? I've been doing them the same way since I took over a, a year ago, more than a year ago. Well, what is he talking about? In the past, Rachel used to write down every single word that was said, pretty much verbatim, and our municipal code only calls for action minutes. And that's what I started doing is action minutes. And we've had this discussion in council before, and you have all said and agreed with what I'm doing.
I think with doing what the municipal code requires is certainly sufficient. However, if there are people who wish to see it more fully in detail, I think it is available on the website and you can see it. If that isn't, um, I can't imagine how, how a verbatim minutes, oper minutes well, of everything that was ever said at a city council meeting would be that many pages. Well, okay, I'd like to make this comment uh, in, in following up. We have got to fix the video thing. I, 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 Jed, we have to fix the video, okay? Because if otherwise we have to get a professional transcriptionist to help uh, Ricka who can type 200 words a minute and that's another 120 grand. We can't afford that. In lieu of that, we have to fix the video so you can go immediately to what people said instantly without fiddle futting around with that thing for hours. It's antiquated. We need to fix it so we can immediately go to someone's statement, hear exactly what they said. Okay, so let me make that point clear. Okay, thank you. And so, but in, Ron, does that help you some? I agree with you, sir, because on several of the minutes, and Ricka, this is not, I mean, I, I don't type, I type 80 words a minute, but not 120. Yeah. But the minutes are shy. Okay, they flat are. So maybe there is a compromise between action minutes and bullet minutes. Maybe there's something in the middle. Uh, I mean, I'm tending to agree, Ron, a little bit with you. I would feel better if I can get to the people's statements instantly on that video. Okay? Thank you. I, when they talk about action, I think it's action of the people and the, the, the attendees at the meeting as well. Um, I just lost your name. I can't believe that. <laughs> Ricka. Ricka. Not your, uh, the previous... Uh, oh, Rachel. Rachel, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, she basically, she, she didn't write them down verbatim. She just put down the highlights. Uh, I don't expect anyone to give them verbatim. I couldn't possibly do it. But we need the highlights of this person got up, objected, whatever, and try and get some resemblance of it. Uh, I asked that each city council member go back and look at them. Um, I didn't notice it till now because I didn't have need to go back. Usually I looked at the video if it was something. But... Um, I think we really need to move back to that in some form or fashion. So just think about it and, uh, because it's really important to the public and it's really important that, that the, the people can understand what you're saying and, and your support as well. It's, it's, it's a benefits everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. More comment? Yeah, Dave Matthews. Um, I've had experience with... Uh, uh, Rita's minutes, and even though even those would were just kind of summaries, uh, she would put down like my name and maybe what I talked about. And if you go to any of the desert advisory council meetings, if they ever have any again, they have all the federal uh, meetings open meetings to the public, they have a court report recorder. And I was very surprised to find that at one meeting that I had made a notorious comment, even she didn't get it all down. But, you know, I think we need more than what we're getting now. If we get some kind of recording system where we can actually access uh, the the comments, the, the uh, videos, uh, that would be helpful. But I think we on, on the printed minutes we 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 need we need a little bit more detail. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other council comment? Okay. Motion then to approve the agenda. To approve item. I move to approve item number one, Madam Mayor. Second. Please vote. Oh, Lord. I'm voting yes. Okay. We have three ayes, one no, one absent. Motion does carry. Okay. The next item um, is the item that was pulled. Mr. Culp, would you address that, please? 
Yes, Honorable Mayor, Council Members. Um, this item is for the uh, summary vacation of public access for an old uh, College Heights uh, Boulevard spur. Um, this is a procedural item. Uh, we have conducted our uh, public hearing through the Planning Commission. We've uh, given uh, public notification, uh, posted it in the newspapers. We've posted it on site. We've uh, solicited uh, comments from utility companies as required by the summary vacation process. The uh, utility companies have been satisfied for securing their rights for their utilities within the easement. Um, this is simply the vacation or eliminating uh, any public access rights for that right away. The city's facilities are intact in this right away. We have a 20 foot wide sewer easement and uh, we're uh, we are retaining those rights, but uh, we are vacating only the public's access or use of this old right away. I'm available for any questions that the uh, council or public may have. Um, actually, my only suggestion was I actually is the one that made the the, the, the uh, Suggestion that they change College Heights Boulevard and eliminate that particular four-way or five-way intersection at the City Council back when it was in the old Bank of America. Right. My question is, did it, from looking at what was there, did they vacate all of that it, that whole thing? Because it looks like there's a piece that they haven't done it, and I was just wondering, are they going to finish that or what? The uh, portion that you're looking at is, I believe it's on the very north portion, and that is not within their uh, jurisdiction or not a part of their uh, property uh, per se, the uh, boundaries are shown. I believe we have a you don't have an to exhibit, but uh, no, they, they we have only vacated the portion that is within the uh, property boundaries of the property in question. Okay, you bet. You might want to consider doing it all and get it done. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Cobb, I was looking at the. Um, maps on the PDF on my computer and there was one that had big bold red lines on it do you have that is that available yes sir I believe we might have it available to uh, the, reason I, the, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I need some clarification mm -hmm. are those red mm -hmm. lines the easements or the roadway it describes the uh, the actual uh, boundaries of the right of way that has the rights of the public's usage of that right of way. So the red lines so are describing the boundary of the, the right two, of way. The old road would have gone between the two li red lines. That's correct, sir. Okay. Well, that clarifies a few things then, because uh, what I was seeing there was not the way I remember. You jogging around that road so but the other thing was that I tried to print that out it was on my computer and I don't know if this this is a problem with the PDF that do you, you have the information in or whether it's my reader but the red lines didn't come out this is the map and the red lines are not there and I don't know why I couldn't figure it out so Anyway, thank you. That's it. That's You're welcome. Map, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews, that's the yeah, wrong map. The first there's, one. There's two no, maps. I, I was on the page. I was on the page. Yeah, there's two maps, and you have this one that doesn't have one. I can make that available to you if you'd like. I, that's all right. I, okay. You know, I, I, I got my point across. Okay. Okay, is there any council comments? Okay, then a motion. Motion to approve item four. Second. Please vote. Yes. Four yeses, one absent. Motion carries. Okay. The next item is so. Um, We have number two, three, and four. Okay. So the next time discussion, um, 
This is an item I asked for it to be on the agenda. Um, Councilman Thomas has served on the um, RACVB board and they are cutting down from, from nine to seven and asked us if we um, wanted to continue, would we consider sending a staff representative? Councilman Martin has been the alternate I asked him if he had any problem with that. Miss Brown, can you use the microphone? It's thank Pardon you. me? We couldn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Did y'all hear me beforehand or do I need to start over? Okay. And so um, he had no problem with that. So I asked um, them who they would think would be appropriate and they na named three names. And uh, um, City Manager Strand said that he would ask Jason Patton to serve. And so that's who I would like to ask them to ask Jason <coughs> to attend those meetings, not as a voting member, but as a person who brings information to them from us and back to us from them. And so I would like your approval of that item. The second item, we have no one that is sitting on the BLM roundtable. Uh, Councilman Sanders sat for years and Lori Acton sat for a little while after him and we have no one. And I've asked BLM to send us the minutes so that at least, <coughs> so at least we would be aware of what was going on. I had talked to a person who attends it irregularly and uh, Dave Matthews and he said he didn't really want to serve in that capacity and I appreciate you considering that sir I'd ask others who attend the meeting could they just speak for us and they felt um, unable to do so without direction from us so this way without a vote we are just having input and bringing it back so I would like uh, council to approve both of those nominations. All right, so I'm still going to be, it's going to be Jason and myself. And all I see um, we won't have a, a voting representative. No, I'm coming on that front, all I see you be. We won't have a voting representative. So Jason will be, I mean, you're more than welcome to attend if you choose to. Please. Um, the choice of uh, Jason Patton is a great choice. Uh, he's been involved behind the scenes with the RCB for for many years uh, when he's on council, even before. Um, we've we've talked a little bit uh, here in the last week just about things that we can do between the, the uh, <coughs> recreation parks and what I can help bring stuff to him. He can bring stuff to the to the board. So I think it's a great marriage. Um, I'd like to make one correction. Uh, the the board will go from nine to seven. There will be four hotelers, one city, one restaurant, and member at large. They all they are all voting members. I apologize. I thought that's, that's fine. What that's you why told I want me. to make the correction that he will be a voting member. Okay. And yes, any councilman, we'd love to have Mr. Martin come to our meetings at all times, please. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to Mr. Martin, and he's, you know, he's go back and forth and talk about things, and I thank you for that. Eddie, I want to thank you for your time served on the board. Uh, you brought a lot to us, and we cried on each other's shoulders at the time and talked about the issues, and I thank you, and well, Mr. Wallace, thank you very much. Okay, is there any um, public well, comment on that? Well. Additionally, any other council comment? I just, since it's not going to be a non-voting position then the way we had thought is it was going to be a non-voting position that's so what that's I what we are putting you. staff on there for so do we want to reconsider that and have mr martin and i don't and then jason could be an alternate i guess but since it's a voting position still it is what the council desires well um I was not aware of this recent change up here. 
Um, well, I brought and, it up and, at the last yeah, meeting and yeah, asked your well, No, no, I, I'm not. Yeah, no, I, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. Um, I would prefer to remain on the council and, and prefer to, if there is a voting position, I think I would rather have it than yield that to Mr. Patton. Um, I'm very much interested in the RACBB and the direction in which it goes. <coughs> and uh, I'm just, I'm not so sure that, that in a voting capacity that we should yield that to a staff meet, a, a member other than an elected official. So uh, I think I would prefer to have that position. But that's my preference. Okay. I will certainly yield to you and uh, make that recommendation then. And is there a second? I thought he was, I thought yeah, I had no, made no, the no. motion and I would okay. yield Here, to maybe. his. Okay. Yes. Okay, so second. We'll just do a roll call vote on this because it's uh, not a slide up there. Okay. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mayor Breeden? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Four ayes, one absent. Motion carries. Okay, now we are at item number six. I uh, had, I would like to state up front that we received a letter <coughs> from the Board of Realtors asking it that all these items be pulled unless um, the um, person asking for this item and responded to it was agreed, agreeable to it, and that was why item number seven was pulled. Has number six and um, number eight, so. Yes, Honorable Mayor, if I may. Council members, this is a procedural item for the annexation of a track map into our uh, lighting and landscaping maintenance district 2012-1. Uh, um, the uh, tract that we're uh, considering the annexation for is uh, 6908. It's located to the just to the uh, east of Inyo, North Inyo Street. It is adjoining uh, West uh, Drummond, and it is uh, lies to the west of the uh, uh, Down Street. And what we're uh, doing tonight is required per the. Uh, Ridgecrest Municipal Code and uh, Chapter 19 for our land divisions, uh, specifically Section 19-2.3H uh, requires land divisions to be annexed and to form these maintenance districts to cover the cost for our lighting and landscaping. Um, I do have tonight uh, our uh, consultant that uh, puts together the engineer's report and uh, is available for any uh, questions that uh, the council might have or the public. Uh, Mr. Jim McGuire from Wildan Financial Services is here as our uh, expert and our uh, technical uh, expert on the lighting, landscape, and maintenance districts and can uh, give you more detailed information regarding the, uh, the, the proceedings. Is the applicant here tonight? I assume that since you haven't identified yourself that they must be a, acceptable and agreeable with what was is going to be presented. Is that correct? There, there has been no objection. The uh, engineer's report has been sent to the uh, developer, the landowner. Uh, I believe the ballot has also been uh, sent, the protest ballot, and there has been no objection at this point. Okay. I, I have some questions if you could uh, address some of these. The idea of doing this at this point in time, what does it imply by the acceptance of this by the city <coughs> and the applicant other than their approval by the vote? the dollars and what the uh, inferences are by the Landscape and Lighting District. Well, Honorable Mayor, I can tell you that the physical impact is, it can go either ways. Uh, if, the, 
if the district formation and the uh, concurrent annexation is unsuccessful, all costs associated with the operation and maintenance of the improvements will be the city's responsibility if the improvements are installed. However, in such a case, the level of maintenance will likely be less than the maintenance that would otherwise be supported by the assessments. So in short, if the ballot uh, comes back to say no, it will be the city's responsibility for all, all the costs associated with the improvements. If, however, if the district formation is successful, the proposed assessments will be submitted to the county, and that will be in August of this year for the fiscal year 18 and 19. Uh, it will make the tax rolls, but the first installment assessment revenues will not be received until approximately January of 2019. The developer is responsible for the first year of all costs of the operation and maintenance of the newly installed improvements. Uh, the city may need temporarily to advance funds to the district to cover costs between the beginning of the fiscal year, which is July of 18, and the time the first assessment installments are received, which would be January of 19. Annually, the city will be responsible for the general benefit costs identified in, uh, for the improvements, which is estimated to be approximately $267 for the fiscal year. And again, there are annual uh, reports that we must go through as a part of this 218 process. Each year, uh, we look at what the costs will be, and the assessments are established relative to those costs. By us agreeing to this, we are fronting, they will pay, and because we will not collect the taxes, they will pay ahead of time so that the dollars, will, when they come in, will be paid for, but not by our general fund or lighting district or any other fund, um, road, any <coughs> anything. And it will be approved in that manner. Am I, do I understand it? Correctly? Well, yes. They they are responsible for the first year of all the cost of operation and maintenance. However, there is a short time there. By the time it makes the tax rolls, and by the time we get some money uh, from those tax rolls, we'll have to fund it temporarily until we are fully funded. There'd be approximately six months there where we would be advancing funds to cover the expenses. But then when the tax uh, when the tax rolls do come in, the uh, district would be funded and the city would not be an obligation. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. <coughs> if indeed it is not accepted by the vote of the applicant and the people he represents, what happens? Well, it would be at the at the council's discretion. Uh, the city would be, uh, if, if uh, the city decides that the, uh, that, uh, the uh, landscaping district is going to fail or the ballot comes in as a fail, it would then be the city's responsibility for the operation and maintenance of those improvements if installed. Now, uh, it would be at the council's discretion then whether they would want to proceed with the recordation of the tract. It would be at your discretion then to, uh, uh, if you're going to accept the uh, charges for those improvements, for the operation maintenance of those improvements, and consider the recordation of the tract if the city wants to incur those, those expenses. If indeed that um, this, is, this fails, he, he, can, he can or can, the applicant can proceed with this? His track map and the development thereof, or it, he can't. It would it would actually be at the discretion of the council. Um, you, you would have a decision to make. If the ballot fails, the city would be responsible for all those costs of operation and maintenance. You would also have the discretion whether you would want the track to be recorded or not. Uh, the way the municipal code states right now is that the track development must must provide a maintenance district for those improvements prior to recordation, period. 
it would therefore be the council's at the council's discretion whether they're going to accept those charges and whether they're going to allow the truck to proceed. In the discussion with the applicant and his representatives, you have heard no dis no no uh, disagreement or issues with this. No, ma'am, uh, we have not. Uh, this actually is the uh, fourth zone within our uh, district. We currently have uh, several other uh, zones within our lighting landscape maintenance district and uh, this this will be uh, zone four <coughs> okay is there any other council questions yes um more <coughs> some comments first but so i gave you all two papers and i put a few extras down here <coughs> so um this has been an issue that we've been just that we discussed at infrastructure committee um, and we've also, I know the Planning Commission was discussing it recently, um, but there's been some concerns about how we're doing our lighting and landscaping districts, the costs associated, and um, the type of lighting that we're doing. Uh, these two documents that I put out, one of them talks about how a lot of cities are buying back their street lights from SCE. And our current methodology, what we do is the developer pays for the street lights, they install them, and then we <coughs> sign them over to SCE to maintain them. What would happen is we would then have to buy them back from SCE versus if we stop this madness and stop just signing them over to SCE for free and then down the road we're going to end up buying them back. Um, maybe that's something we should consider doing now instead of continually signing them over. Um, I know there's been concerns about the city having to maintain them, but if we're establishing a lighting and landscaping district, we could incorporate the cost of our staff time to maintain them. In addition, the other document that I gave you shows the breakdown between the LS1 cost, which is what's currently being installed, and that costs $12.42 a month versus um, the LS2 is $5 a month. So you can see at, over time we end up paying, I think it's half a million dollars per year um, for our street lights and so on. So it seems to me that we need to be reevaluating our procedures on this instead of just continually going down the road of what we've been doing maybe it's time to reevaluate and not just have the developers install all these lights, sign them over, and then us eventually down the road are likely going to be buying them back. So it seems like we need to get off this train. Lauren, can you and Bart address those? Because there, I know there was discussion regarding that. Give me a Thank you. Take your time, sir. We discussed. If, can you hear me all right? Yeah. I'm sorry, get closer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Better? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, it's hard for me to turn all the way around and look at you, but please assume I'm addressing. It. Anyway, um, one of the things we discussed earlier today is that the LS1 lights, uh, we just had a discussion with uh, Southern California Edison. If it's an LED light, it's nine dollars and forty-three cents per pole. Um, if it's an LS2 light, it's six dollars per pole. So the difference is actually three dollars and forty-three cents. Now that three dollars and forty-three cents includes basically if the pole gets knocked down, um, they take care of the emergency setup. They take care of putting it back. They take care of just all sorts of things, um, pole related. Now, everything else is included in the LS2 as well. Now, a replacement pole of the type we use here is about six grand. If we're going to try to do emergencies, 
that that's tougher if we don't have. I'm not saying we don't have locals. I've, I I was told maybe I need to talk to R E O D R E D Electric to see if if we could have somebody. But if it's from somebody out of town, then emergencies take a while. What I what I promised in the meeting today is we'll investigate who is trying to buy back because I've heard things from other people that say there's maybe a dozen in the whole state that are trying to buy it back. I have not read what you what you handed out. I'll get a, if you don't mind emailing me a copy because they've all disappeared. So that'll give me a place to start my research because I said we will check into what's going on and why. My guess is that it's much larger communities than Ridgecrest that have the people that have their own traffic light um, people to do that so they have electrical expertise, et cetera. But this is my thought. I will research and find out and come back for sure. Uh, we are already discussing this in the infrastructure meeting in May. Uh, we will have the research done before that meeting. Um, is that enough for right now? I, I would like you to, um, if you could talk about, the, the, the question was, own the poles, repair the poles, plus all the other accoutrements that go to that, whether you have to do the underground. We talked about that. Can you go into a little bit more so everybody understands we're coming sure. from the same level? Um, so LS1 lights, we take care of nothing. We pay them, um, Southern California Edison to take care of everything. It's a hands-off system. If there's a light bulb out, they take care of it. If a pole gets knocked down, they take care of it. <clears throat> if a uh, somebody steals all the copper, now maybe that's not prevalent, prevalent here, but it is in many other communities. If somebody steals all the copper, they replace it, all right? Um, that's an LS1. So uh, it, it's not hands-off completely because we still report to them light bulbs that are out when we find out. But it's, in general, it's, it, it's, it's their responsibility, and they're also liable. Whereas with an LS2, um, they're responsible for everything. Easiest way to say it is below the pole, all right? They're responsible for the wiring, the conduit, the transformers, the, et cetera. And we pay $3 either way for the power per, per light. So um, one of the th all the things that are included in both, now, again, remember, poles would not be included in the LS2. <laughs> but they have their facility charges, their operations charges, their maintenance costs, uh, their cost to operate, public goods. Again, this was one of those where I went, huh? So we, we asked today, and what that includes is, is where they're required to do um, renewable energy, where they're required to, <clears throat> by state law, to have this program. I'm guessing the underground um, electric lines, the, there's an, an act for that. I'm guessing that falls within this. That they, they have to find a way to pay for all those things, so they charge <clears throat> not only this, but going into your home, you pay the same type of pieces for that. Um, their overhead and then their uh, rate of return that they're allowed by the state, they do that through capital recovery. Did I get that last part mm -hmm. right this time? Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. It, do, you, do you need more? Okay, I just wanted to make, make sure that, that I covered what you needed from me. I would like to understand if indeed we um, do not go forward with this, what is the implication of e to each applicant? Because I know there's concerns whether that can be done in a cheaper manner and therefore if one goes through this way, the next one goes through and we've decided to do it in a, in a cheaper manner in a more efficient manner. Um, does the, the guy that paid the higher amount, what kind of liability do we have, not liability, what kind of responsibility do but, we have to them? A better word, responsibility. Thank you. Um, the, the answer is, 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 is I don't know. Um, what I would suggest is that if this is the process we're using now and we decide to change our process, all right, we probably, would not have a responsibility to change. But would it be ethically and morally, would it, would it make us better people if we 
allowed them to go back. The problem is, is we've spent the money on all three of these already. It cost us approximately 6500 7500 with staff time to create these. The first one cost 19000 Some of them since then have been 9 and 12 in, the, in that range. We're coming down, and we're getting a, 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 okay, please don't hit me upside the head, but we're getting a deal on these because we did three at a time. Um, so we're getting them from from from, from our, our consultant for 65, like I said, and plus staff staff time is 75. Um, the cost of, of creating these is actually fairly reasonable. Um, now the cost within the system, from what I understood earlier today, is based on what we need to make sure that it keeps the city whole. But what actually gets charged out on a yearly basis is what it cost the, I've lost the word, cost the. For the operation and maintenance. Of, of, the, of the lighting and landscape district, for the cost of the district. <coughs> so the, the first cost um, what might be higher, but then it comes down to what it actually costs. So if we can find a better way, it, the right thing to do would be to change the, the wording within the districts. Hang on a minute. You'll yell at me if we can't do what I'm suggesting, correct? Thank you. Um, would be to change the wording for the budget within the district if we find a cheaper way to do it for the three that are included here. Did I go around in circles too much? I'm sorry. No, I have one more question. I know that the idea to do this is I think a fair and equitable way to make sure that the citizens don't pay for everybody, but that the cost is borne by those who benefit from the, that district. What if we had one district all over the entire city? That's exactly where I was going. What a great lead in. Um, oh, and we didn't okay. actually set that up. But you, and, we didn't. <laughs> no. Um, we are seriously considering in, in this next year looking at putting forth a lighting and landscape district for the entire city. What that will do is it will take one of the things that, I don't know, maybe I can actually say offends um, one of our applicants is, is that there's a, a fairly large amount of overhead in, in, in it. And, but the point is, is we have to pay the bills, we have to pay for the engineering report every year. All of that overhead is, is, is realistic. What it comes down to, though, is if we had one really large district, the entire city, let's say, then it would be kind of like the park and rec, Not I don't want to necessarily equate the two because they're not the same, but the amount of cost would come down considerably. It wouldn't come down to 10,000 like, like the park and rec district is, but it might, it might come down to you know, for the whole city, it might come down to 25 or 30 or less than 50 for sure. Whereas right now, the, these are, I meant for the whole thing, not just the overhead. The overhead part might be three or four or five times what it is just for this one district. Because we, we'll get one bill for all of it, and you pay the bill the same as you do. So if we had a large district for the entire city, it would certainly cut the overhead, and it would actually put the money where the people benefit from it and the money that comes out of the road fund to pay for the lights <coughs> would then go back, go back into the road fund to pay for more, more road operations. What happens to those districts that are already formed? Should we go ahead with something like that? My guess is, and again, you'll tell me where, where I, if I go down the wrong path, that they will be incorporated at the time that it's... Uh, created okay I've asked a lot of questions how about the rest of us I don't know what that last statement meant say one more time I didn't understand what that last statement that you made. oh okay well I'm not sure how far back to go but, but just I'll the last try. one but um, and I know if I say exactly the same thing louder it doesn't help okay because you know I know how that works but um, what I was trying to say is, is that if, as the city, if we go for a referendum 
to create a lighting and landscape district for the city. Part of that referendum would include <coughs> incorporating the existing ones into the one large one. Because there's no point in have six or seven little ones and then the rest of the city be one big one. Because then the cost for those six or seven are still going to be higher. Whereas if we put them all together, then it becomes one, one cost. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Then, in, in reference to Councilwoman Stevenson's question, in reference to what is the real deal? What is the real benefit from us <coughs> moving forward? And what are the what are the distractions that would say for us not to? Have you found anything why we should not move forward in this? Now, in your studies. For, for what I understood from Councilman Stevens' question, it was about the lighting and land, or, uh, about the LS1 versus LS2. And the cost. Um, I, I, and my thought on that is, is that I don't see, uh, these don't come up till May. We should have most of our research done before then. If we need to make a change on what type of how the lighting and land, landscapes paid for, whether it's an LS1 or an LS2, we should be able to get there still. So we're not backed. Our back is not against the wall with a deadline that we got to do something <coughs> right this moment because I don't she think provided this information. So it's somewhat, I'd like to kind of read it a little bit more. And I think Mr. Rator provided some information as well that I'd like to get a, a right. handle and, and, on. It. And I've read, read Mr. Rator's information. Um, and that was part of the discussion that we had earlier. Um, so. What I'm saying, I, I don't believe, to, I, I keep turning around because you have to trust your consultants to know more than you. Um, if we moved ahead today, um, we wouldn't have any trouble changing from an LS1 to an LS2 you know, in, in, a, in a fairly timely manner. Okay. Oh. Because first of all, the lights have got to be built yet, and they're, and they're not built before they could be turned one way or the other. Okay. And the track mat can't be approved until we go through this process? The, the, the it's a question. I think Lauren explained that, but let me try one more time. Yeah, I just okay? want to make sure we no, understand. No, no. You, the track, according to the way the rules are written right now, you cannot approve the track map until we have a lighting and landscape district. However, the council can decide that, no, we don't want to do this in this specific case, or no, we want to change what it was <coughs> and not do them at all. But I would not suggest that because it throws the cost back on the city. So all the citizens would pay for it. Well, the, the, the problem with it is, is there's, it still would have to come out of the limited funds that we currently get, as opposed to being paid for by those that benefit from it the most. Council, I haven't studied this. Terrifically, which I perhaps I should have, but I, I want to make one, a couple of big, broad stroke comments. Um, when Ms. Stevens and I went to the League of Cities conference, in Sacramento, we went to the trade show for two different days, spent several hours, and when you're going down the aisles at the trade show. Um, you see some things that pique your interest right away and you zoom in on them and then other things you go, I'm not interested in that and I, you know, whatever, and I'm not, thank you, and then they come up and they give you another color problem, I, thank you. I, well, at the last conference, um, three or four people kept coming up to us with the beautiful four color. It's like, man, I am not interested, and I should be, forgive me, but this is, you should have been there because they're bringing up stuff with lamp poles and I'm going, I'm not here to look at lamp poles, but thank you. But the point I'm making is that toward the end of the conference, I stopped and said, I need to look at the lamp pole because apparently it's a big deal at this show. And so I stopped and I watched the slideshow and I talked to the guy. And then Ms. Stevens came and she talked to them, right? And what we learned by talking to some of these folks who were very assertive was that they're not saving 5%, 10%, 15 They're saving 20 30 40 50 100 I mean, it was like, what? Uh, where you own all your own equipment, you put the thing in, and the maintenance is almost little to nothing. They offer a long guarantee program, and you just literally save an absolute fortune with solar and everything. I mean, company after company after company, I'm going, what? After about the third one, I listened and stopped and said, talk to me. 
And it was the same thing that happened. I'm not interested in these big monstrous road things, paving things. We had three people with that. But Miss Stevens was, and she said, come on. I said, Lindsay, I don't want to look at that. I, I mean, I have eight other booths. I want to focus. He said, just come look at this thing. I said, it's ugly. She said, it may be ugly, but it can save us a fortune. And I said, all right, what is this thing? What does it do? Right? So I listened to that guy and his slideshow. Well, come to find out, city after city after city around the country are saving a proverbial fortune. 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 percent by owning their own equipment, taxing their staff to get up to speed to learn some of the new technology, and they're doing fantastic. And so I kind of expressed an interest in the light pipe. When I left, I was all in a light bulb. Man, I was taking the little light bulbs home, putting them in my pocket. You know, let me call the guy with the light bulb. And Lindsay was doing the same thing with the road machine. When Lindsay stopped at one booth, we talked about the refinancing for the bond thing, remember? That was just a little simple. He was another guy. There were 10 of those guys. Well, Lindsay brought back an idea for that, which I think the number is several million dollars of savings, $300,000 a year over a 10-year period. That one idea that she brought back from the show is saving the city millions, not 10, 20, 100, millions of dollars. So the point I'm making here before, you know, you're talking about the plan LS and LS2 and this, and they, by golly, they guarantee the copper wiring and theft. And I'm going, what the heck, theft? We have no storms here. Nobody's stealing light bulbs. It's kind of like renting a tuxedo or buying it. If you rent a, a, a tux three times, you just as soon buy the thing. And if you buy the thing at a great price, maybe twice. It doesn't make sense, in my opinion, to pay big, hefty, duty, heavy duty utility ongoing maintenance costs for a light bulb is going to be there for 25 years anyway, just sitting there in the sun. And if the thing is soaking up sun and the solar thing or one of these new things, I just, when we go through these programs and we look and we look at what SCE is offering us, I would love it if the, you two guys would go to some conferences and bring back the latest and greatest, coolest, hottest, neatest stuff that other cities are doing and saving a fortune other than just the standard stuff we've been doing for 20 years because they offer us the gold-plated guaranteed plan. You know, if somebody steals the copper wire, by God, we're there. I'd like to take the risk of somebody stealing the copper wire, and I'd like to own our own equipment, our own lights, have one, one district, let's simplify this, and let's cut our costs in half. So I, I'm, I'm not saying what you have here is not great. What I'm saying is I would like to see in the mist, in the mix, I would like to see two or three plans from young, aggressive, new, brand new comp entrepreneurial companies that are flat cutting city costs by half. I'd like to get a couple of bids from those guys and let's discuss some new stuff, you know, rather than just continuing what we've done, you know, forever. And that, none of that. Y'all are doing a great job with this. I can tell you're trying to save costs. You too, Mr. Culp. I just, I just would like to challenge our city and challenge public work to look at the best of what's out there to try to bring back to you. That's all. Thank you. Well, I think that's what they're trying to do, except that I don't want the developer to sit and wait for us to do the study. And their project is sitting here waiting like, I've got 40 homes I'm going to build. What are we, what are we waiting for? I, w I would like to offer an alternative. I want more study. I want to see. I want to see what Will Dan is going to give us as how we can save money and do that. I want to see the new ideas that you're going to come back with after talking to these other cities that you suggested tonight and see how we can do that. But I don't want to hold these people up because we may save you money in a year or two or three. Now, I want to be fair. The, can I say something? Please. Sorry. Well, first of all, um, Councilperson Martin, if you've got the light pole with the phone number on it, I'd be happy to, or the website, I'd be happy to take a look. So please just send it to me. I don't, no problem at all. Um, the, other, the other one, we're not going to be turning them over to Southern California Edison until they're constructed. Am I right, Lauren? Yeah, it'd actually be their inspector approving the construction. Well, the, okay, <coughs> we might have to pay him back for the inspection or something if we decide not to turn them over, but we have a little time. So 
we're, like I said, we'll discuss this in. Oh, you're there. Good. We'll discuss this in May at, at the infrastructure committee, um, and by then we should have enough research to know. It's not likely that any of the light poles will be. It's possible that some of them will be built, but it's not likely that, that they will be very far along yet. All right. So hopefully we can decide one way or the other at that point in time. Um, if we need to throw in new and innovative, we, rather than just find out why some of the people are buying back theirs, um, we can add that to it as well. Um, it, I was, you said May, but we don't. We haven't had the infrastructure committee meeting. It's not until the fourth Thursday of April. Is there? Can we start the discussion then? Because sometimes we these could, discussions could, take. It's not the discussion that I'm worried about. It's the amount of research that needs to be done. Um, I don't. I, I will guarantee that we will add it to the agenda, but only to discuss where we're at at that point in time. If we think we're far enough along, great. If we if we don't, I still want to push it back to May. Yeah. Is that all right? And yeah. And one of the reports I, I went ahead and emailed them to both of you. Thank you. Actually, came from the League of California Cities when we were there. A guy had done this opportunity assessment, a full report and presentation on the street buyback and LED retrofitting for our city. So I sent you that report too. So. And then the other thing was something that um, Ms. DeHaan, Planning Commissioner DeHaan, um, she had asked Karen for some additional information. So Karen had sent her this street co light cost resolution packet. So. I forwarded that to you. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there public comment? I mean, is all council coming in? <coughs> public comment, please. Well, I won't get in depth because council doesn't listen to me most of the time anyway. But <clears throat> this is a Prop 218 issue, and most of what they're talking about today doesn't fall under Prop 218. In fact, it's even dangerous to consider it there because. <clears throat> The city can be held liable later for on a couple of reasons, but primarily if the district, the people that are in the district later on say we don't want it, then the city's going to own those pieces under the, the district and they'll have to maintain them anyway. So it's not something that's permanent. It's something that hasn't been challenged yet, but I guarantee you it will be, and I seriously doubt the city will win the issue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dan Retora. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank council member person Stevens and councilman Martin for some forward thinking that I think is what we really need in our city is more people to be looking out for what we can do and not worry about what we can't do or why we couldn't do something in the past. Um, and, and to the mayor, I'd like to suggest that we don't have to hold anybody back from doing anything. It is strictly up to this group right here exactly. to determine if we want to postpone uh, something for six months, uh, we can do that. It's, it's totally up to this group. So uh, an ex a study at an extra two or three or four or even five months doesn't have to make any difference at all. Um, n now, um, my feeling is I, I don't recall any of these things, these three topics, although one was pulled, uh, from having any committee review. D did, did I not attend the committee meeting and miss something somewhere along the line? It was on the Planning Commission. It was at the Planning Commission? Yes. They went through a detailed review of the layout, the numbers? I don't have that information. Okay. Right well, my, what I have heard indirectly from some of the developers is that, no, that didn't happen. Um, no, if that may be wrong, but whatever. Um, I have been trying for at least two and probably three years to get a more detailed discussion regarding the LS1 lights. Uh, and it just keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed. I, we had a discussion this afternoon. Uh, I know Mr. Lauer is going to uh, start pursuing that with some vigor and we'll maybe finally get some information. 
Uh, my feeling is that if we're going to do something uh, with regard to LS1 versus LS2 or LS3 lights, now is the time to do it, not wait until afterwards. Um, and by the way, it's not just a buyback issue. It's transitioning from one strain of thought to a different strain of thought, trying to save the public some money. And that really ought to be important to all of us. Um, uh, this, is, this isn't just other people's money because we're, we're all residents and these people are our neighbors and our friends. We should be trying not to just spend their money, but maybe try to save them uh, some money. Um, I do have a question with regard to the uh, water on, on this particular topic. I believe it shows, it's hard to read, but I, <coughs> I think it says $930 for water and electricity for irrigation. Is that a correct number? I believe uh, I might, yeah, uh, need, now. might need our consultant to answer that question. He's got the detail okay. for the uh, actual uh, okay. well, without uh, going uh, in, budget. I, I don't know that I want to hold up the, the meeting for that. I guess I'm suggesting that $930 worth of water per year is an awful lot of water. Um, well, they did I, say that they were estimating high so that they could come back and get the actual figures. Did yeah, but this is also that, in setting the maximum. And my feeling is, you know, you can you, you add ten percent here, you add another ten percent on top of that, and then you add twenty percent on top of that. Pretty soon, these numbers get just out of hand. So, uh, that, my my I'm feeling sorry. is that we need to be worried about all landscaping. <clears throat> all water use. I'm not. I'm not. You know, sky's not falling. You know, I. I I'm not a person who thinks this town's going to run dry of water next year. But, but still, anytime I see a number like nine hundred and thirty dollars for water, I. I gotta wonder, is there a landscape plan that went along with this? Uh, yes, there is. It, and if there was a landscape plan, was it provided to anybody? Yes, it was uh, reviewed by the city. Uh, we reviewed the landscape plan. It was approved, and that plan was forwarded to our consultant for his consideration developing the estimate for the maintenance and, okay, and so costs for water and uh, maintenance of plants okay, as well. So the developer put together a plan? Yes, is there is okay. a, an approved uh, okay. landscape plan. Thank, thank you. Um, fourth item here is the, the overhead rate is 39% on this. Um, typically in the state of California, we try to limit things to 15%. And, and that is sort of, uh, I don't know if it's the law, but it certainly is what the city tries to do. Uh, I know and every other group I work with is they try to limit all their overhead uh, to 15%. Um, 39% seems like Overhead, God, we we, we got to be able to do better than thirty nine percent, and and that of course makes uh, uh, Mr. Lauer's idea of having a larger area a, a good idea if we can do it, uh, but to have dozens and dozens of these little things each with forty percent overhead, that's just additional cost to all of our citizens. Um, the uh, 3.5% adjustment. Nobody has commented on that. 3.5% um, inflation. That's that's pretty stiff. If if you look at what the city is paying for the wastewater fund, it's 0.5%. Um, my feeling is that we shouldn't be asking the public to pay the city seven times the interest rate that the city is paying the public. And somewhere along the line, we need to come to an agreement of what is an honest in, uh, rate for uh, interest on, on that kind of thing or, or um, uh, whatever. Um, last comment, if you look at the figure right here that I have, 
and you can see it, it's the, the, the figure that shows the lighting. It's, it's not clear that there's lighting on the other properties adjacent to the peripheral lighting on the, the actual area that's being discussed. If there is no lighting on the other sides, then that would mean that the people in this area are being charged to light a street that is only half used by the, the people that are living in this area. And so even though the, um, the general benefit is listed at $112, which is almost nothing, uh, if, if, if the lighting that is being put into this track is actually being used as a benefit to all of the people on the other side of the road, it should be more like 50-50, it seems to me, and you can't, you can't tell from this figure whether these are the only lights or they're lights on the other street. Um, and it would be nice to have some details on exactly um, why there isn't more of a general cost. So those are just my thoughts. Anyway, I, I, I really feel that this should be sent back to committee and reviewed thoroughly so that everybody understands because we're setting um, a, a precedent when we start d doing this and, and I would like to see if we start a precedent that we do it with some type of an affordable solution. And I, I, I do appreciate uh, Mr. Lauer's uh, efforts in trying to get some additional facts uh, and, and I certainly hope we can have that by May, but what I would like to do is say, hey, let's not worry. This town has never worried about a schedule before. We don't need to worry about a schedule on these three items. Let's do it right. Let's find out what's the right way to do it and then proceed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, Stan. I just wanted to tell you where you said the landscaping irrigation. You said it's just water. But it also says electricity, maintenance, exactly. and repair. The 930. Oh, oh, yeah, it includes some other stuff. But there's also another line item for landscape maintenance of uh, uh, hun, like, this is landscape was it, maintenance. It was a, no, yeah. 2,200. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, right. So it's, it's hard to say how that's all. Right. Um, so, so, so it wasn't we don't all know water. What percentage that is water. Right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Hi, Tammy Rulin from IWB Construction, and I just wanted to just touch bases on one thing. So as a condition of recording our track map, a lighting and maintenance district was required, which means we cannot move forward as far as the conditions state right now with recording that track map until the lighting and maintenance district is completed. So we just wanted to touch base a little bit on that because we are actually in a position to record that track map fairly quickly. Once that track map is recorded, we now have 40 lots that are ready to build on. And I wanted to let you know also, what is the tax benefit of having 40 lots at 40000 apiece? Wouldn't that be prorated to the day that I record the map and have benefit to the city uh, based on the new assessed value? So the holdup of this and out of us pulling our item is that now we cannot move forward with recording that because I can no way justify a tax that has so much in overage costs and, you, and, and just administrative fees for such a small district. So I just wanted to touch bases on that and comment on that because I believe... Is it 1% that the city gets back on the tax roll? How, how, how much is it? Two. Two. Okay. So 2% of 40,000 times 40 lots is quite a bit of revenue for the city. Tammy, I don't think anybody is trying to do anything because that was my concern. By us not taking action tonight, Correct. do we hold you up? My concern is I want to be able to 
find solutions, and that's why Absolutely. I asked you earlier, yeah. would you agree to simply say, yes, we're going to go along, but we're going to find the solution together? Correct. That we must do this in a way that allows this development to go on. I want to see all 40, all yes. whatever built as soon as we can. We need the housing. We need the homes. But at the same but point, I, 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 I don't. I, I see where you are. I don't want you to be overcharged. I want you to be comfortable with it. And that's what I asked you earlier. And that's why I pulled your item. And actually, I do believe that all three should be pulled because I don't well, believe that the council should approve any of them the way they are stated I, now. I got you. That yeah. may be end up. That may be where we are. Yeah. But I wanted to be able to understand that if we allow those to go on, we are not imposing these fees on it. And that's what I kept asking our staff. Correct. I want the process to go on. I don't want to force you to agree to something that you are going to vote against anyhow, which yes. doesn't solve anything. Exactly. So that's why I wanted to see if we could go, and that's why I was asking staff, can we go ahead with it but not agree to all the terms and conditions that are in it? Can we agree in concept? And that's what I want to hear from staff, if we can do that. Because you said that it would come back to us to say, yes, they can go ahead with their track map. Am I, do I understand that? You, you have total discretion on what uh, would, would happen here. If, if you decide that you uh, don't want to proceed, then, uh, and then you decide that uh, you're uh, going to allow that track to uh, continue and, and record, uh, it's totally at your discretion. You, you, it was an ordinance that was enabled by the, by the city council in which you have full authority to uh, waive any requirement that you may have, uh, unless it's something that's non-constitutional. But in this case, uh, I think it uh, has full discretion by, by yourself as city council. Can we ask the other applicants at the same time, since we're not really discussing all of them right now, we're discussing the one, but I know at least one of the other applicants is here. Can we ask them, could they allow us to agree in concept with so they can proceed and develop the procedures thereon afterwards. But Rusty, you're here. Or, or, or is I, I think what we're trying to ask is: Is there a way for them to still be able to proceed with the development, but not approve the lighting and landscaping district? But not saying that we don't ever want to have a lighting and landscaping district. We just want them to still be able to proceed with their development when we want to reevaluate this process we don't want them exactly. to be stuck we, we with it we don't want to get so tied up with making any kind of long-term commitments with sce that's what i don't want to do that's that's your at your discretion right you but have I, the I, ability to okay say so that. we can take care of the existing applicants just fine and oh by the way right after that if we come up with some something that's incredible we can do that we're not committing to sce for any more than just the existing applicants we have you you have the you have the discretion to do whatever it, okay. it's it's your ordinance you have the ability to say whether this thing proceeds okay. or not no, we would have to treat I, I, all the yeah. right. in the same manner but I, I think we need our choices laid out here is what we're asking Lauren we need to know because we don't want to say we're not approving the lighting and landscaping district and then them not be able to proceed we want them to be able to proceed but we also don't want the city to have to end up bearing the costs without having the lighting and landscaping district exactly. so how do we balance this we want to see their projects move forward we don't want to see the city stuck with the cost of lighting and landscaping we don't want them stuck with the overcharging that they feel is happening here so we need you guys our staff to kind of help guide us mm -hmm. on what we well, should well, do. well what i can tell you is that your ordinance simply states that uh, a map must be annex into a lighting landscaping district prior to recordation now if you want to waive that requirement you can you can say go ahead and record your map we'll record your map we're waiving that requirement but yet we will still uh, pursue some sort of lighting landscaping maintenance well, the way, the way it may be able to be included within the, the uh, development agreement or their improvement agreement where they agree to continue to try to 
uh, uh, develop a lighting landscape and maintenance day. <coughs> but it is at your discretion whether you want to, uh, you can go ahead and allow the map to go ahead and record and continue with your process of trying to develop a, a, an equitable lighting landscape maintenance district. Yes, thank you. I, I, Absolutely. Well, hang on a Hold minute. Hold on. One more. Wait a minute. Let's hear from Bart. Sorry. The, the only problem with that that I see is that this is the city's only by requiring it before re recordation, if you allow them to record, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm just stating if you allow them to record, the city has no control over m making them creating a lighting and landscape district. We just, we lost all of our ability to require it because what's happened is, is they recorded and you said, now go ahead and build. There, there, there is no... I hate the carrot and stick thing, but what, what I'm trying to say is there's no, no record. I'm sorry. No obligation. There's no obligation for them to do it anymore. Now, well, if I, I'm not sure what mechanism there is, if if there was a uh, you you said there's an improvement agreement right. that's required prior to that uh, you will have to review and approve uh, at the time the map is presented for recordation. And that improvement agreement is reviewed by the city attorney for improvement securities and any other terms for the development of the of the tract. So what I'm trying to say is, is there if you include the requirement in in, in the next document, just to allow them to record and get started. Am I getting this right? Yeah, I uh, okay. You. So if we if we require if we require the next document to include this, then we're protected. But if we do not, and we just say tonight, you know, you can, we are going to allow you to record <clears throat> with, without this, then, then again, we have no, they have no incentive to ever go about it. Okay. I, I guess from a real simple standpoint, number one, we, we don't want to do anything to hurt you and what you're doing. So that's right. number one. Not uh, that would be silly and ridiculous. What we're talking about is just the big picture here. Yeah. And the only thing what I'm talking about is the cell phone service where we're, I'm worried about signing up for another long-term contract with SCE uh, uh, or with anything, you know, where this deal, I just, if we have new technology come along that we can do one district in incredible new lighting, I just don't want to sign in blood with SCE on any long-term anything uh, that would lock us in where if we find some new technologies, we can't use it. I, I would say that, that if we want to do what you're talking about, I would say that we could tell S, uh, S Southern California Edison that we don't want to do LS1 anymore. And if we change our mind, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. they'll be happy to take the lights. I would guarantee you, okay? Well, right. I can't guarantee, but you understand what I'm trying right. to say. Um, so if we want to switch to them taking the lights that we've collected over that period of time, um, they probably would. Let me, let me just real, real super quick. I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, you said, boy, if y'all can do this extensive research. Well, Lindsay did, did it in, I think, seven seconds. L traditional and solar street lights, lifetime cost. If we take into account only the purchase price, the initial investment into off-grid solar LED is usually two times higher compared to traditional street lights. Over a 10-year period, however, traditional street light installation, maintenance, and electricity costs per unit ranges from seven to eight grand. With solar-powered street lights, it's estimated three to five grand over the same period of time. Then they go into installation cost, and then they go into maintenance cost, which is like 33% less. So, I mean, in seven seconds of research, you find out, and this is what we found. The guy said, what, what, all these studies and all these big plans and all, he said, why don't you just buy the damn thing and y'all go bolt it in the ground, and then you're good to go for five grand. No, but you're laughing, but that's, they, there not, they were at well, the I show. Was not, I was seriously no, but there not they laughing, were at sir. the show, and they were magnificent. I mean, this thing looked like a Herculean thing, the bolts with it. I said, that, all of that's five grand? He said, yep. And I said, how long does it take to install it? You know, a couple of hours. I'm going, holy Toledo. So what I'm saying <coughs> is, I just don't want to get locked in with Edison when we actually do, and I mean y'all, you're kind of tasking us to do it. I'm tasking y'all to do it, y'all the staff. Mm -hmm. You guys need to go to these solar shows. You need to talk to these people. You need to look up other cities and find out the coolest, neatest stuff and bring it back so we can all enjoy it 
and use it without these massive maintenance things with everybody. You know what I'm saying? I do. All right, so let's do this thing. I mean, well, here it is. We, haven't we all agreed? I mean, we so haven't we voted, but we agree, we're all saying same the same thing, thing over and over, over again. And the only thing I want to understand that there's an ability for those of you who are making these applications that there will be a landscaping and lighting district. I want you to understand that, whether it be yours, whether it be everybody's, but somehow I don't think it's fair to think, and I don't know how to tie that into it, that you wouldn't have to pay for that. There will be one. It will be as efficient and as economical as we can possibly make it. That's what it's good for all of us, as you pointed out, Tammy, the income you bring and that all the districts, all the um, other applicants will bring is significant. It's important. But I want to make sure we understand that there will be that. How we tie that in to allowing you to go forward, you all better tell us. What did you call, you called that in the improvement agreement? Yes, the uh, municipal code requires uh, several documents to be presented to you uh, at the time that they request recordation. And one of those documents is an improvement agreement. And that's a document that's a, a binding agreement for uh, citing what improvements are to be installed and any other terms that the, uh, that the council or the developer or staff may uh, think are important to be included within that. It includes what the improvement security will be uh, and so forth. But uh, yes, there is an improvement agreement that's required so prior can, to recordation. But, but that's prior to recordation still. So then we're still yes, not. Yes, that has to be reviewed by the city attorney, approved by the city attorney for presentation to you for your consideration. But the statement in the improvement, can, uh, improvement agreement could say that we will have an lighting and landscaping district, but we won't have to have the terms finalized yet. So That's then they right. can still record and proceed, and they'll still be required to have a lighting and landscaping That's district. That's what we're saying. Okay. Can, can I make a suggestion, Madam Mayor? Please. Um, I would suggest, no, I can't, you know, I can't put something forward, but I can make a suggestion, so I will. I would suggest that, that you pull all three items that in two weeks we come back to you with a, with a staff report that says approximately what we've just discussed, that that we, we, we are recommending that you waive the requirement that this is done before rec recordation, but it will be included in the, I'm sorry, improvement, improvement, improvement agreement. Um, and we can come back to you in two weeks with that item um, so that this is less tangled up. Can we also make sure that when it comes back to us that they, the three applicants, have already agreed to it in concept? Sure. Well, how about, how about? well, I, I will guarantee that we will meet with, as long as we can get them into, not in one room together, but into the room with us, um, we, we will meet with them before the two weeks. And when you all come back to us, please understand fully what is being expected of, of us and what you expect of us and what we expect of you so that when you come back, we're not going to have to say, but this isn't right. Let's, let's see if we can come up with that concept of doing that. And how we make that determination will be up for all of us working together. Do, 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 before we poll, poll the last one, I mean, do you guys want item eight polled? I mean, if they're, I don't want to poll someone's item if they're OK with what's written there. Well, I asked if all the applicants, for any of the applicants were here. I see that you're here now. Do you, can you come up and address yeah, us? Yeah, sorry, before Thank we just you. pull his item. Uh, Rusty Warren, Warren's on mode. Um, first of all, hi. <laughs> first of all, uh, you got a system of code enforcement that is in the budget that is 40 plus years old, <coughs> never been enforced. In the last few years, this thing started getting enforced. So you've got a handful, you've got three, maybe four zones right now, and you're trying to add another couple, three more to it. 
the system's broke. That that code that you guys got to think that thing is broke. It doesn't work. You're you're trying to force feed it onto a handful of people, and it's not going very well. And it it does need fixing. In the meantime, um, and I'm all for you know the city not footing the bill on everything. I said that during the planning meeting, planning commission meeting. But we got to fix the system before we start handing it over to the, to everybody. Everybody paying their little bit of taxes toward the city stuff, you know, for the you know the, the landscape and and whatnot. The one or two percent is that what it is? Um, if all the whole city was a district, that would more than cover your guys' electric bill and landscape maintenance. So my suggestion to to this thing here is that don't let it hang anybody up, which you guys are talking about, and that's wonderful. Um, we do come up with an agreement that there will be a lighting and landscape district. That's fair, but it's got to be affordable for the whole city. It can't just be put on a handful of people. Um, and it's just, it's on a system that's just never been enforced. It's pretty much just an old dust collector in the closet there. So they need to be, it, it needs to be scrubbed and a whole new thing set up to do this. Um, so I, I'm for it. I'm for, you know, paying our fair share to the city and not footing the city with the bill on it. But let's make it workable for everybody. You know, and we can we can sign a waiver, you know, waive it at this time to, until they get it all ironed out. We continue with our projects. Well, I think we're all in agreement that it's, it's, it's a normal course of life, and that's that'll be good. But as long as we all agree to it and, and make it part of the final, maybe, maybe the final... Uh, What's the final one they do? The occupancy. Um, by then, I'm sure you guys will have it worked out for most of these people that are working on it. <coughs> but I, I, we can't enforce a system that's broken. We need to fix it before we start handing it over to the handful of people that are trying to do it right now. And uh, I, I think that's the way this needs to go. Be fair. So one thing I'm concerned about is I think we would all agree that taxes are very expensive and uh, there's a lot of taxes. Um, so I, my concern is, and I understand that you're estimating high, but is that really going to go down when it's all said and done, you know? And I do have concerns about the administrative um, cost of it also. So. Um, I mean, if we could tighten this up a bit, because, um, you know, $2,300 a year, you know, in taxes on top of all the other taxes, the property taxes, that adds up. So if we could somehow tighten it up a little bit, that would be great. I don't think anybody here, I know any, but nobody here wants to overburden anybody. But there are costs involved, and we will find ways to make it happen where it's fair and equitable for all of us. And it will come back, and you will, I believe, recognize the value therein, and so will we. Okay. I mean, that's Pollyannish to say, but that is what we have to do. But you're right. Everybody here is saying the same thing in a different manner. But yeah, so let's, so just, let's, let's get on with it. shoveling money out there and, uh, until we get this thing worked out. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Pat Ferris. And um, we've probably been saying some more of the same thing that's being said over and over in different ways. But um, your builders, if we want to build a city, you need to work with the builders. And we've heard from two uh, in New Mills Valley Construction and uh, Warren's Automotive. Now, these are builders. They're out there putting the shovels in the dirt and making it happen. And it's, it's not new that their complaints, and I'm not talking about these people, but people in the past and people who have tried to get developments accomplished and how they get hung up with uh, being able to, with permitting and being able to get, uh, so they can't go forward. And when, when you're a builder, and you're in the middle of a construction project and it's stopped because of some hang-up, time is money and big money. Now, we need to make sure we have this ironed out smoothly so that there's no 
hang-ups or delays, as the mayors mentioned, with, devel with developments. We've been challenged to provide 300 um, apartments or living quarters minimum, totaling with, I think the final call is 700 uh, units of housing for people who are coming in, for mm -hmm. uh, people who are being recruited on the base, uh, young professionals. Um, and I, I personally know of some developers that are looking at trying to fast track that. And because we, some, the, by graduation, they need 300. Well, that's impossible. But if when, and, and as um, Joan Johnson, I think, and the Admiral said, if, if, we, if we lose these people, we lose a generation, and we can't fulfill the mission of the base. So it's critical that the city find ways to accelerate and help these people be able to accomplish these developments. And we're talking about somebody that's ready to build 150 apartments or, um, and want to fast track it to accomplish, to meet the challenge. And I think uh, the mayor and all spoke for the, the city and the county that they were, were going to be willing to um, fast track permitting, if I understood that right. What, what we agreed is to meet with the city, the county, the Board of Realtors, the Navy. Um, we met with builders last Thursday. We met with builders and investors. Toby, you were there. I mean, Toby, sorry. You were there, and uh, we and Ron Strand and uh, all of us were there making commitments. And we have, just after the Economic Outlook Conference, I got a call from two developers and one guy who says, I got lots of money. I want to invest in this community. We're working with them. We're making it happen. Uh, and, and that's why we can't let, let some little hang up like being able to get a map tracked or something, a track map uh, pushed through. So um, I, I just want to, sometimes just a little hang up can just mess up the whole program. So uh, we're challenged with something, a, a greater challenge than this city has probably ever seen if we have these developers, and I don't know some too, Peggy, that are saying, I want to be a part of the solution and coming in with money and uh, ready to move on it. So. Um, and there, I want to go back to saying that there has been criticism before of having hang-ups and delays that have been difficult to overcome. So I hope we can take it, this new challenge and a new mindset and uh, forward-looking, as Stan has said, and Wallace, uh, there's, new te there's new technologies, and we don't want to lose that, but we, we want to pro uh, provide a process that allows things to move forward before you finalize on the big picture. Well, so. Pat, all I can say is this, that we are going to have hang-ups. There will be hang-ups and there will be issues. But the attitude has been and will continue to be, we're going to find ways to work together. <coughs> so with Chuck and Tammy and, and Rusty and, and Tina and all the other developers, there is no way if we all agree that the idea is to grow and begin to develop those homes and condos and apartments that need for those 300 and, well, there's 168 who've already agreed they're going to be here in June. So we got to find places for them, and we will. Not tomorrow, but we will. Chuck? Sorry, I referred to you as your partner. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chuck Rulin, 1213 Carolyn. Uh, on this LS1 rate that you referred to with the LED lighting, I think you said 935. Is a pole? Give or take, yeah. And does that include the power? It does. Okay. That's good to know. And then also the main thing I wanted everyone to know is one of my big problems with this whole thing is is there was a $5,000 first installment, tax installment. It's a, I have a three-phase project. That $5,000 was going to be, it's, it's a, per my conversation, was figured as high as it could be figured in future problems or whatever. So out of that $5,000, I'm going to power up four street lights and, and, and basically be responsible for landscaping 1,200 square feet of DG. Whatever that cost, they were going to take that out, and the rest of the money goes to reserve. So out of that $5,000, three or 400 of it's going to actually be used, maybe 500 towards the lights and the landscape, and the other 4,500 
just disappears and goes to the reserve. Um, you know, that was my major problem with it. And there's there's a few others, but I just want to let you guys be aware of that. that. We do know. We do know that there's issues, and we're going to deal with them. That's it. You've made it clear. Okay. So, you want to work. We want to yeah. work. Let's do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dave Matthews, um, this number, what is it, number eight, number, no, not number eight, six, five, whatever we're discussing, that's a new track, I, I take it. Um, there was talk earlier about people voting, but the only people that are going to be voting or is, is the developer is that not right at this point in time the prop people the property owners and the developer depending on whether it's developed or whether it's the developer is going to pass those costs on to his people who buy his project well i'm still confused anyway um Lighting and, land, and, and landscaping districts. Um, and also something that Mr. Warren said was that the system is broken, the, reg, the regulations were broken or something. I guess I'm going to have to ask Mr. Lauren or, or somebody, maybe that's been around here for as long as I have, <coughs> excuse me, 50 years ago, a guy by the name of John Dieter came in here <coughs> and started building some new houses because there weren't very many here. I happen to live in one of those houses, and we don't have a light, land, lighting and landscaping district, as far as I know. So who's paying for that street light up in the cul-de-sac? The city under this... What, We're what, all paying for it. I'm sorry, I can't hear. We're all paying for it. So it's under the, the fee that we get charged that, that Lauren uh, talked about earlier. Is that correct? Would you beginning? address the issue? Yeah, we uh, as a city uh, pay, I think it's on the order of a quarter of a million dollars a year for our uh, street lights. And, uh, okay, that, and that's the whole city? That's, that's the whole city. Okay. Well, I think that's the way it ought to go. I, I don't know where this lighting and landscaping district prior to the recording of the map came from. I've, this, I've only heard about it recently. They're done mostly all over. It, this isn't something we just dreamed up. I mean, well, I'm Dieter didn't do it, did he? But, but it's done in many, many cities. Honorable Mayor. Yes. If I may, please, uh, the enabling ordinance for this uh, indicates that it was somewhere in uh, 1987 is when the enabling ordinance was uh, was adopted by the city council. I, I didn't catch what you said, John. It, uh, it's the enabling ordinance for this was adopted by the city council somewhere in 1987. The uh, 87. Yes, 1987 is oh. is, uh, is the date. So it is on 40 that. years old. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't but, think it's right. Yeah, I think you need to work it out. It wasn't enforced until recently. Okay, that's what Rusty was talking about then, huh? Okay, well, I think it's, I don't think it's right. I think you need to rework the whole system like Rusty said. And uh, I think the whole city should be the lighting and landscaping district, but the landscaping's already done, been done in some areas, so maybe you have to split them up in two. Thank you, sir. Is there any other public comment? Any other council comment? I just motion that we pull item six, and then I guess do we need to wait to do it to eight, or can we do it now? Is the um, is the developer here for eight? The yes. applicant here for eight. The warrant. And do you have any problem if we pull it? OK. 
Okay, so what do we, what, can we do we do we need to poll six now and then wait a minute and poll eight? Right. What 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 I would recommend, Madam Mayor, is rather than pulling it, okay. um, uh, continue it uh, and continue indefinitely. But do we need to continue them indefinitely separately, or can we do both at once? If you make your motion clear which items you're talking about, I have no problem with them being in the same vote. Okay, I motion that we continue indefinitely or until next meeting, items Sorry. six and eight. And okay. item seven let's will be placed back on. Yeah, let's put seven in there too. But so we already way. pulled seven from the agenda. We did, but yeah. we, we went, don't want to give that a condition yeah. differently. We, we will bring others. back six, seven, and eight at the next meeting, ideally. Second? Yeah, I'll second. Mr. Thomas, no, the screens are pre-made, so you guys changed your motion, so I have to do a roll call vote. Aye. Mayor Breeden? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Ms. Stevens? Aye. Four ayes, one absent. Absent. Okay. Thank you all. I'd really like to thank our staff. You guys did an amazing job willing to go ahead and our consultants from Wildan to work with us, to work with these developers. Thank you very much. Good job. Keep it up. That's all. <laughs> okay, the next item is committee report. City Org, and um, I'm going to report on City Org that we had a meeting last Monday, and there was discussion of cleanup of the city of Ridgecrest and how we can continue to do that. And we are asked, um, Gary Charlon and Todd McKinney and people from the Ridge Project <coughs> <coughs> to come back to us next meeting and how we can continue to do that and and uh, develop it even more fully. There was some discussion of old buildings in town and how some of them are very decrepit and we asked a staff to come back to us and see is there some way to have our abatement officer be more aggressive talking to these people so that these homes that are already there that simply need work on to become places where people can live what can we do and so staff is coming back to us with that uh, Gary Charlin and Ray Hawker have gone around town and videotaped a number of areas in town that um, they're they're looking for direction and help and see if people are willing to say I'm willing to stand up and be counted and make my building not a hovel but a place we can be proud of so that's coming back so all of that will be on our next uh, the first um, Monday of next month okay the next item is Finance Committee we have not met yet infrastructure we have not met yet parks and rec we met yesterday and we discussed the parks, the assessment district workshop that was held last Monday. Um, we talked about the results of that. Um, we also talked about um, Commissioner DeHaan went out and did a, I don't know, survey on her own door to door of a couple of lower income areas, Wilson and La Mirage. Um, she talked with the, just over 20 people, she said, because she wanted to make sure that we got there. And thoughts on if this uh, assessment would affect them drastically. Um, and out of the people she surveyed, only one was against it. The rest of them were all for it and said that they didn't feel like an average of $50 a year would be a hardship for them and that they would like to see the improvements. Um, we heard an update on Kermagee ball Ballfields that is still on schedule to be wrapped up at the end of April. And we also heard an update on the splash pad. <coughs> they are finishing up getting the permits um, and sign off from the county on that. So. Um, yes, we're going to try and make sure we have ribbon cuttings for both of those. Okay. Youth Advisory.
Uh, youth advisory, the general council met today. Um, they're planning a scavenger hunt that comes it's next Saturday, I believe. And they did their elections uh, for their new board members for next year. Thank you. Action. We meet on the 17th of this month at 4 o'clock here at Kermagee Center. Okay. RECVB. Economic development. Okay, other committees, boards, and commissions. Anybody have any to report upon? Madam, Madam Mayor, not on that. Back to the RACVB. Will we, do we need to make the adjustment in reference to the members instead of me being there, Mr. Wallace? That, that would be it just, is it Wallace and Jason or just Mr. Wallace? Wallace and Jason was approved. Wallace and Jason were approved. Okay. So I'll adjust it on the agenda. Thank you. Sir. You're welcome. Okay. Um, city manager's report. Uh, the only thing I have is I'd like to uh, get everybody to sign up for Nixel. Um, it's very easy to opt in. All you have to do is text Ridgecrest PD to 888-777, and you will receive any advisories or alerts. You can go onto the website and control those, how, what you want to receive, and put your email address in so that you would receive photos if we sent those out. Um, it's a great communication device for emergencies and getting the message out there. Uh, Parks and Rec will also have a channel as well as our streets department, so it's a good thing, as well as anonymous tips. Uh, even though we can communicate back and forth through an anonymous tip, it's still anonymous. We can't see who's doing it, so it's a good way to report things to us as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Future agenda items. Anybody? I have one. Sorry, sorry. I have one, Madam Mayor, that I'm, we're hoping that it will be ready on the 18th for the employment. The uh, If you'd like to talk about it. Yes, sir. We're trying to get the uh, representative here. Uh, we're hoping that he can get here the 18th. If not, I'm sure Captain Maroney could give a overview of what's going on so far. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council comments. Comments? Eddie? Um, yes, Madam Mayor. I wanted to say Mr. to Mr. Matthews, through many trials, I was able to get through and finally was able to see the flowers that you sent me for Valentine's. So thank you very kindly, sir. Well, well <laughs> Lindsay? Yeah, I have one. I just wanted to say that I was very disappointed that the meeting to D.C. was scheduled prior to the agenda item that I had requested publicly at the last meeting per policy. Um, this just once again shows that the tribe's needs are being put ahead of the city's. Tonight we were originally supposed to hear and decide on refinancing our CalPERS, which is a major issue for us in many other cities. Some cities may even go bankrupt because of it. But because the meeting had been scheduled today, Mr. Strand was not able to be at the meeting, and so the CalPERS was bumped. And so I was just really disappointed that also we were not able to give input on what was said at the meeting. Um, we also, there was many who would have liked to have seen it recorded. I don't believe that was done so. And so that's my comment. I'd like to make two. One at the last, I last, uh, Councilman Maurer and I both talked about <laughs> sanctuary cities. And since there has been a, a sanctuary city that, I mean, a city, um, uh, El, I've forgotten the name now. Los Alamitos? El, yes, thank you. That has asked to be taken out of the state and, and uh, not be considered a sanctuary city, that they are, and I wanted us to look at it. I know it was very time consuming and very expensive for the state, for the city to try to do that on their own. So I asked Councilman Martin if, since he is the League of 
representatives are representative there, would he follow up and see if there's any interest in doing that with the league and other cities? There may be some that are. There may be some that clearly aren't, but I would like us to follow up and see where it goes. You indicated interest there. Yes, no, I have a tremendous interest in it, and I thank you, Madam Mayor, for, for, for asking me, and I had even spoken with Mr. Pilchin about a month ago on that. Uh, when that issue started coming up, uh, I fired up because I am very, 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 three very strongly against going against the President of the United States, going against the United States federal government. I'm very much against uh, setting up programs to protect, you know, illegal felons at the expense <coughs> of the American citizen. So I, I uh, there's many, many avenues of the sanctuary city that I'm very much opposed to, and I would be glad to try to take it up with the League of Cities and, and, um, and uh, see where that goes. Thank you. Useful in that regard. There are other cities who are becoming friends of the court or something like that uh, in joining the lawsuit. Uh, but the deadline is fast approaching. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right, then we will adjourn to closed session. Thank you all. Thank you.